friends in this video we are dealing with the important disorders from systemic pediatrics that you must must know especially in this video a lot of clinical case scenario based questions have been discussed so that you know you know from your questions how to pick up those points with your you know INICT and the next pattern of questions being more and more clinical oriented these questions will give you an edge to you know how to see that information how to synthesize that information and come up with your diagnosis plan the investigations and management so make the best of it. Moving ahead to some important things from pediatric cardiology. So in the fetus, we know the oxygenated blood is carried by. So who carries the oxygenated blood in the fetus? So it is carried by the umbilical vein and not the umbilical artery, right? And remember vein is one. The umbilical cord normally contains one umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries, right? Deoxygenated blood, however, is carried by the umbilical artery. So normally there are two umbilical arteries. But if a single umbilical artery is present, then there are more chances that the baby has a congenital renal abnormality, right? Structures in fetal circulation with decreasing oxygen saturation. So if you talk about the fetal circulation, the maximum oxygen saturation is there in which structure? The maximum oxygen saturation is there in the umbilical vein because it brings the oxygen from the placenta. The saturation in umbilical vein is around 80%. Now following umbilical vein, next comes the ductus venosus right after ductus venosus this blood is going to reach the inferior vena cava the saturation of blood in inferior vena cava is around 70 percent now from inferior vena cava the blood goes to the right atrium and right ventricle okay so right atrium and right ventricle right and a part of the blood so basically what happens is in the fetal circulation if you have seen some part of the blood will directly go to the left ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. And some part of the blood will mix with superior vena cava blood and go to the right ventricle. So the saturation in left ventricle is more than in the right ventricle, okay? The saturation in the left ventricle blood is around 65%, while that in the right ventricle blood is around 55 to 60%, okay? So from left ventricle comes the aorta, okay? And from aorta comes out the umbilical artery, and finally, the umbilical artery goes back to placenta for oxygenation. So minimum oxygen saturation is there in the umbilical artery. Maximum oxygen saturation you can see is there in the umbilical vein. Okay. Moving ahead, the most common congenital heart disease in children is ventricular septal defect. Okay, VSD or ventricular septal defect. Now most common congenital heart disease affected by infective endocarditis is again also VSD, ventricular septal defect. Okay. While the least common congenital heart disease which is affected by or the congenital heart disease which is least commonly affected by infective endocarditis is the atrial septal defect or ASD because the gradient across the atrial septum is very less because the pressure difference between the two atria is very less. Okay. Most common type of ASD is the ostium secundum type. There is also another type which is the ostium primum type. There is a atrioventricular septal defect or endocardial cushion defect also. So the ostium secundum type of ASD is the most common type, right? The drug of choice for closing patent ductus arteriosus in preterm neonates. So it is ibuprofen and indomethacin. So these are the prostaglandin inhibitors which can be given in preterm babies to close patent ductus arteriosus. In ibuprofen has got lesser side effects and than indomethacin and both of them are equally effective. So ibuprofen is the best choice. If that is not the new options, then indomethacin. And you know, in recent studies, even paracetamol has been seen to be helpful in this situation. Drug of choice for keeping the ductus arteriosus patent. So in some ductus dependent lesions, like if there is transposition of great arteries with intact ventricular septum, in that condition we will like to keep the ductus arteriosus patent. And also in certain other ductus dependent congenital heart diseases, which we have discussed in the pediatric cardiology videos. So we would like to keep the ductus arteriosus patent for some time before the child can be taken up for surgery. So in those situations, we would like to give a PGE1 analog or alprostadil. Okay. So that needs to be given. But an important side effect of this drug is apnea. Apneas can happen so the baby might need to be intubated and kept in a neonatal intensive care unit. Fever is also another important common side effect of this drug. Okay. Moving ahead, clinical features in a child with VSD or PDA, wherever there is a left to right shunt lesion, what happens in these conditions is excess of blood is going to the lungs. Lungs are getting flooded with blood. So the baby will have recurrent episodes of pneumonia. Okay. Recurrent pneumonias or respiratory tract infection will be there. So because of that, so recurrent episodes of fever and there will be tachypnea, fast breathing, you know? tachycardia will be there. And these children will have features of heart failure. So because of heart failure, 
दे विल हैव हिपैटोमेगली ओके दे कैन बी हिपैटोमेगली कंजेस्टिव हिपैटोमेगली कैन बी देयर रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस कैन बी देयर ओके एंड यू कैन गेट रेपिटेशन इन द चेस्ट इज वेल